Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at the database which is going to uh, provide all of the data access for our coffee shop point of sale. Um, if we have a look at what we've got here, um, I've got four entities uh, linked together with foreign keys. Um, if we start with product, you can see that we've got uh, an entity containing the attributes product ID, type, description, price, and we've got a binary object which is going to be an image. And you can see that that's linked here to this table product type. This basically means we can group products by types. For example, we can have hot drinks, um, we might have cold drinks or food. So that allows us to group those together. Um, when a transaction is made, you can see we store the transaction up here. So we've got the transaction ID and the transaction date. And then we need to store all of the items that were in that transaction. So someone might have ordered a Diet Coke, chips, um, and a couple of other drinks or maybe other bits and pieces uh, and that all gets stored here in the transaction item again you can see the relationship here is we've got transaction ID over here so we've got the key from this side in the transaction item so you can see we've got a one to many relationship down here you can see again we've got product ID in this table so we've got the key from here over in transaction item so again we've got another one to many relationship and the same for product and product type. We can see here we're linked by product type. So we've got the key going from one to many. So that shows you what we're going to create. So the first thing is, is how we set this up and how we actually put our data into the database. First thing you'll need to do is start yourself a new version of Visual Studio. Um, hopefully you'll be working through all of the tutorials. So I'm going to be creating a new project. You'll be able to download all of these project files later on. I'm just going to call my project coffee uh, shop um, project and I'm just going to press OK. Make sure you've got Windows Forms application selected and you'll notice I'm using .NET Framework 4. Um, this is quite useful as it's got quite a, a few new tools for Entity Framework so I'm going to press OK and you can see I'm taken to a new form here. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get this database set up. So to do that, if you bring your Solution Explorer into view here, um, what we need to do is right click up there where it says Coffee Shop Project and we're going to go to the word Add. Now mine's going to go off the screen here but you'll be able to choose a new item. That's going to pop up a box where you get to choose between the various different items and you are looking for towards the bottom a service based database. Don't go for local database uh, we want really a small SQL Server database and this is the one to use for that. Give yourself or give your database rather a name so here we're just going to call that coffee shop database. Give it a meaningful name uh, and make sure we just capitalize that and go add here you get a window and you've got two options. We're going to go for this one called Entity Data Model. The reason for that is this is going to automatically map all of our entities into objects or classes, uh, which is going to really simplify all of the programming later on. Go next. Again, we want to generate everything from the database. There's nothing in there just yet, but I just find that the easiest way to work. So press next. Hopefully, if everything's gone according to plan, you should see your coffee shop database displayed here. If it doesn't just check that you haven't got anything else in that list. It should give you a name of a connection string so here you can see it's copy, coffee shop database entity. That's perfectly fine and we're going to leave that as it is. You'll see next it's trying to retrieve the information. There's nothing in there but you know I'm just going to pick tables there and press finish. So that's basically our database uh, set up. We just need to put the entities in there now. You can see here it, when it's finished it brings up this thing called Model 1. We're going to come back to that later but we're actually going to have a look at putting our tables in directly in case you fancy querying uh, the database directly. Um, just an easier way of working. So over on Server Explorer if you haven't got that if you just go view you should find it down in the list there look. So Server Explorer um, you'll see hopefully that you've got your coffee shop database that you created. What you want to go and do then is go into tables view. You can see there's nothing in there at the moment so right click and we're going to add a new table. If you've ever used access it's pretty similar to that. 
So the first thing we're going to do is going to create a product table. So we don't give the table a name yet, but we put in all of the various attributes. So for this coffee shop, we've got product ID, um, and we need to choose a suitable key for that. Now, to make life simple, all I'm going to do is choose an integer for that. And I'd like that integer to be um, automatically selected. Uh, and every time I add a new record for it to add another one to the key. So to do that, we're going to need to scroll down here until we find identity specification and change that into yes. And you can see here we get options then. Oops. We get options to say what the increment is and what the seed is. That basically means where it starts and how many numbers it goes up by each time a record is added. That's that pretty much done. Obviously that's the key for this table, so just hit the little key icon up at the top there and then continue to put the other bits in. So I've got product type, which is going to be my foreign key. So at the moment, with foreign keys, you just have to make sure you pick uh, the same data type. So that's going to be an integer. I don't really want to allow nulls with that, so I'm going to uncheck that. Uh, I need a description. I'm going to choose... Um, an nvarchar max for that. I don't really know how big the description is going to be yet, but I'm going to just opt for nvarchar. I'm going to go for price, which is going to be a uh, type uh, money. Let's just choose that like so. And finally, I'm going to choose image, which you might not have come across this one, but I'm actually going to use for that. You'll notice that there is actually an image type. There we go. And for all of these things, really, I don't really want to have nulls in there, but uh, I'm just going to select those there. Okay, I'll just make that a bit bigger so you can see the whole thing completed. So there are all my data types. Okay, primary key selected, and I'm just going to hit save. I have to choose a name from a table. Convention I always like to use is TBL for table and then give the table a name so in this instance this is the product table and we just press OK see the product table has been added into the database so we're going to just do the same thing now, I'll just do one more, we'll do the one to join up the keys so we'll add another new table I'm going to do the categories table here um, so what I'm going to do here is have the product type which is going to be an integer and again for simplicity I just press oh, it's a bit easier. There we go. So product type is going to be an integer. Again, scroll down here. I want that to be an identity specification. So just change that to yes. I'm happy with the seed that we've got there. Again, I'm going to need some sort of description of what the category is. Um, and again, I'm just going to go for an nvar chart max there just to um, keep things relatively simple. Uh, need to make that the key and I'm just going to press save and again I'm just going to name that so TBL for table and that's going to be product type okay so that's the second one in um, once you've done that and you've put all of your tables in uh, I'll quickly zip through those in a moment uh, we'll link up the keys so let's just put those other tables in I'll skip through nice and quickly Okay, so you can see there I've now completed all of the uh, tables. If I just scroll through, you can see that they all are. Next job really is to join all of the foreign keys. It's an easy way of doing this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new database diagram. You can find that by going into Server Explorer, finding database diagrams and choosing Add New Diagram. It's going to say you haven't got a diagram at the minute, so I do want to create a new one. Add all of the tables that you've created, simple as that really. Um, it'll then just try and display them. Obviously, 
you might need to do a little bit of a rearranging here so let's bring them all into view for you so you can see them okay so the next thing to do is to join them all together so here we can see we've got the transaction and the transaction has a transaction item as part of it so here we've got the transaction ID so you want to take and click and left well sorry and left click on the key from transaction ID and just drop that onto transaction ID over there and you can see here it's linked it so the primary key table is transaction the foreign key is a table transaction item okay that um, there's various options here if you want to enforce uh, referential integrity things like that I'm just going to leave it as default and you'll see there that I've now got the link between those two um, I've also got a link here between transaction item and product and again it's got the key as a foreign key over here so I'm just going to literally drag and drop press OK, press OK, that's that link created and of course within my product table I've got essentially this lookup table here with description and product type so we've got the one to many table there OK and OK that's my relationships set up press save, give it a name so coffee shop diagram press OK it'll tell you that you need to save and I'm just going to choose yes for there and that's my database ready to go